Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the ideal differentiator circuit. I have drawn the schematic for it, uh, similar to the ideal integrator, except the location of the uh, capacitor and the resistor have been uh, exchanged. And uh, we can apply uh, an input signal, which is typically a function of time. We can get out an output signal, uh, which ideally will be equal to the derivative of the input signal with respect to time. We can analyze this circuit both in the time domain and in the frequency domain. If we were to do the time domain analysis, we will start by noticing that um, there is no current going into the input terminal of the op-amp, and so uh, the voltage Vi of T will generate a current flowing through the capacitor. See, and all that current will also flow through resistor R. So I will get my I see as a function of time that current will flow through resistor R and it will generate a, a voltage drop, which I'll label V sub R as a function of time across the resistor. Now, my current I see as a function of time is the current uh, through a capacitor and the relationship between current and voltage for a capacitor is that I is equal to C dV dt. And obviously that dV um, will be V in because the other side of the capacitor is sitting at a virtual ground. I can also write uh, the expression for my voltage across the resistor, Vr as a function of T. It's going to be equal to that current, Ic as a function of T, times the resistance R. And I can rewrite that in terms of the expression for current that I have previously written as uh, R times C dVi of T dt. By looking at the circuit, we can observe that the expression for the V out of T, VO, uh, is actually equal to negative VR, again, since the negative input terminal of the op amp is sitting uh, at the voltage of ground, and so V out of t is equal to negative vr of t, which will be equal to negative rc dv in as a function of time dt. So this will be the expression for uh, the output voltage, which as we can see is proportional to the derivative of the input voltage with respect to time, proportionality constant being negative rc. If we were to analyze the circuit in the frequency domain, we will be instead replacing the resistor and capacitor by their impedance values. In the case of the capacitor, 1 over j omega c. In the case of the resistor, simply r. And I will write my phase or voltage v out is equal to um, negative the feedback impedance over the input impedance, so negative r divided by 1 over j omega c times phase or v in or negative j omega rc times phase or v in. And we can see that uh, we have, I'm going to rewrite this as minus rc times j omega times phase or v in. Because we can see again that we have multiplication times j omega in the frequency domain will correspond to um, time derivative in the time domain. If I were to plot the magnitude response of this transfer function as a function of frequency, A being the ratio of V out over V in, I will get that it is uh, proportional to omega or proportional to F, and so basically something that is a straight line. So this is what um, differentiation looks like in the frequency domain. In the time domain, I will expect um, if I have my input signal V in as a function of time, let's imagine that I have a, a square signal or a pulse signal, something like this. I will expect at my output, I will see uh, if the input signal is zero, my output will be zero, the derivative of zero is zero, and then 
Every time I have a sharp change, I will expect to see a little bit of an impulse. So that over there, an impulse in the negative direction, or actually it could be backwards in this case because we have a a negative um, minus RC, the proportionality constant is negative, so it will be actually an inverting type of circuit. But nonetheless, I will get the spikes whenever I have a change in my input function. And so it can be potentially used as an event det det detector, for example. Uh, or a wave shaping circuit like we saw before, just like the integrator uh, will convert a square signal into a triangular signal, a differentiator will convert a triangular signal into a square signal, for example. So multiple applications. Just as the ideal integrator had its limitations, the ideal differentiator uh, also has some limitations. The main one being that notice that as omega increases, the magnitude of the transfer function, which is essentially the gain of the circuit, uh, keeps increasing in an unbound manner. It goes uh, to infinity. And so what essentially that means is that um, any high frequency noise that I have is going to get amplified by a lot. And so this circuit, even though in theory it works as a differentiator, in practice, if you have an, a noisy environment where you have high frequency noise, um, that noise is going to be amplified more than your signal. So a major limitation of the circuit. Amplification of high-frequency noise. Um, and that's about it. We're going to see in a future video uh, how we can modify this circuit to build a practical differentiator. Uh, one last thing that we did not mention is that even though I've drawn the circuit like this, if you wanted to um, connect a compensation resistor to the circuit, let's say to avoid DC offsets due to input bias currents, uh, you could do so and the operation of the circuit will not change. The value of the resistor will be R to match the resistance seen in the other terminal. Uh, and so this will be an equivalent circuit to what we've previously drawn. Thank you.